gamers uh this patch came out 13 days ago while i was in germany for the m4c tournament so obviously i saw these patch changes but i didn't make a video about it because i wasn't home uh and i decided i should probably make a you know a little video give you guys my opinion what in my opinion is good what's bad and what should get changed and what should be implemented into the game this is a massive patch by the way i'm assuming it's coming in april i don't know exact date but again i'm assuming it's going to be in april so the team has created several interesting in-house mods to showcase various capabilities of the editor uh, you can find the list below so this is the biggest thing in my opinion for the game in the long run yes there's some balance patches coming some balance changes some design changes but having the map editor and mods in the game is huge okay i didn't initially realize how big this is going to be until uh, a little bit later when i saw some of the videos and it kind of changed my mind on these things basically not only they're releasing the map editor you know where you can create your own maps like different styles of maps specific custom maps import like age of empire 2 maps into age of empires 4 they can just recreate them and stuff like that so the potential there is huge, right? Because we can have tournaments on non-official maps, right? This gives a lot of um, a freedom in the community and in the pro players and tournament organizers to be like, you know what, maybe we don't like playing Mongolian Heights. So we have this thing now where we can create our own maps and pro players can vote which maps are going to be played in tournaments, which I think is huge. So if there's any point where something is, a, is thought to be imbalanced as a map or whatever, we can change it or we could just play a different map and another thing is mods so mods i didn't really get the uh you know again how big it is but uh mods in aoe4 allow you to customize anything so for example uh if an archer shoots an arrow you can make it so it shoots cows and then i can go create a custom game and import that mod so whenever on the archer shoots there's cows flying this allows you obviously you know that's ridiculous right but this allows you to customize the game so much and not just reducing or increasing size of things or whatever but there's already someone that made a mod where the arrows when the archer shoot they look way more realistic and it looks way better instead of waiting for developers to change this or change that like let's say the way a certain unit it looks sucks right people can make a mod that makes that unit look better or move better or whatever and then we can play tournaments with those mods there's so much potential here and you can collect all these like cool mods that people made and then you can play custom games with them hopefully and this already happened in aoe2 if a mod becomes extremely popular the developers might slash will add it to the game this happened in aoe2 there were a couple of things that people made mods for and then they you know it was so commonly used that developers said you know what we're just gonna put it into the game there's a lot of importance on this and balance changes come and go but this is something that can just add so much content to the game like so 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 much content to the game from you know balanced maps and, and new maps to like crazy fun stuff mods that improve the, the the visuals in the game there's just so so much that can be done and i'm super excited to see what people come up with and already people were making mods and maps uh because there's a public test realm basically where you can play this right now and you know i can't wait for this patch because of that one of the maps that was added is called Forest Nothing, and it's from AoE2, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just forest and nothing else. There's no gold, there's no food. It's a fun map, right? There's also a, a map called Mega Random. When you enter a map, everything is random, like completely. <clears throat> the water can be on any side, the land can be on any side, uh, gold can be like fucked out of it, almost none of it, and so on and so forth. And you can see here they added some uh, mods themselves so you can see a royal rumble uh be the last king standing achieve victory by eliminating all enemy kings while defending your own and again this is based on the classic edge of empires 2 game mode where basically you start the game it's a normal game you spawn with a king and if your king dies you lose the game so you need to protect your king at all times and this uh when i was watching some of the videos in aoe2 this was a popular mod for people to just play like this wasn't a competitive thing but it's a fun thing fun content that people can play and enjoy it's kind of like a little arcade game you know you have uh, this thick wood that's a lot of wood doubles the amount of wood right stuff like that so potential for this is uh huge 
this is something that gives a lot of content to the game and that's how you get them casuals in all right let's go into the patch beast of the hill coming maybe <clears throat> so core units all civilizations field construction build time of spring all increased from 30 to 80 seconds this is one of the best changes they've done probably in the game period field construction is for abbasid and mongols because they can build the siege on the field springles and mangonels and this is incredibly incredibly powerful and pretty unfair to the other civs so basically an abbasid player or a mangonel or a, a mongol player can come in front of your base and like build five mangonels or ten springles even though you were building siege the whole time they can just out siege you in a matter of seconds so this is a very op thing so they're increasing it from 30 to 80 second build time and mangonel from 40 to 80 seconds they're both very good nerfs and um you know just thumbs up i think it's very much needed i think it's cool that you're able to build siege on the field but right now it's a little too powerful so uh scout hunting by reload time reduced from two to one scout uh, melee damage weapon cooldown from 4 to 2 and scout melee weapon damage reduced from 4 to 2. Some things that I might tell you are not in the notes but I know that they're working towards. Uh, so for example I know for a fact that this does not influence torch damage. A lot of people were worried about that that scouts are going to be able to do double damage and then you're just going to burn the buildings. It doesn't impact torch damage because it's a different attack so different uh, attack speeds why they're doing it I i'm not really sure i mean it comes down to the same thing red scouts are gonna attack faster uh maybe it's gonna look more natural because now scouts attack and then they're like four seconds afk and then they go again i don't know um and hunting bow reload time I, I thought that one is interesting and i'm not sure why but now when you're playing against Rus or with Rus, i guess hunting down deer is gonna be a lot faster because they're not reducing the damage on the bow so you're going to be able to farm the the deer uh very quickly so yeah i mean those changes i i'm not uh, uh for i'm not against them it's kind of like okay cool um i guess you yeah. know uh, we'll see how they played out and i do think it's going to look maybe more natural when he goes from four to two seconds <clears throat> economy villager hunted meat carry capacity increased from 10 to 25 now this is a big change so um the reason i assume they're doing this is because uh berries have quite a lot of focus especially with abyssin and delhi but no sib is actually like oh my god there's deer i'm gonna go for that because usually deer are away from your base so it's very risky to go for them and usually the deer are spread out especially in high level games where opponents purposely try to spread the enemy deer so they can't gather as fast and having it uh meat cap meat carry capacity from 10 to 25 makes it so that the villagers don't have to play you know to make insane amounts of trips back and forth thus increasing the gathering time right because there's no not as much travel time um so they remove the meat capacity from survival techniques and increase from harvest rate from 10 to 15 percent and also reduce the research time I don't know if necessarily people are going to go for this. Uh, I, I think it's a pretty mediocre upgrade. Uh, maybe, and this is the thing where the map editor comes in. Maybe if we have maps that have three deer packs on each side, right? Because every single map in AoE4 right now has two deer packs on both sides. But maybe if we get maps with three deer packs on each side, maybe this is something worth investing. Right now... I don't know about that like the thing is they're already buffing it so you don't need to get extra upgrade for it right you can just get something else another problem with this upgrade that i see in the long run is uh like it's always better to get wheelbarrow because you're gonna have a whole game than having it um then having this and then you run out of deer and it's kind of useless um so i don't know wait does this increase hunted meat harvest rate this increased for the boards as well right i mean maybe there's going to be some like play styles again maybe there's going to be four boars in the future maps maybe you can rush this and go for early boar you know who knows right uh and making it 30 seconds uh, uh faster is also very nice so 
Uh, yeah, and taking boards at a high level is pretty rare because boards are usually very forward, so yeah. Anyway, uh, naval. Now there's a lot of uh, uh, ship changes. This is probably the two that I'm most excited about. The other ones I can't say if they're good or bad because I kind of have to play with them. <clears throat> Improve the responsiveness of small and medium ships. So if you played AoE 4, you know that ships are kind of a little bit weird to use. Like they, they kind of take time to turn sometimes. They move weird. Sometimes they feel like they're going backwards. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what they do with that. And arrow ships can no longer fire while moving. So every sieve that had the advantage of moving ships like Rus, uh, Mongol, Delhi, Abbasid, and <clears throat> I'm not sure there's any other sieve. You know, they were able to like basically move and just shoot the whole time. It was hard to run away from them. They're removing that. So basically all the ships are on equal playing field as far as that goes. Extended lines. I, I don't even know what that is. Uh, I think that might be the, the movement speed. Drift nets should be the the gather speed uh i mean these two upgrades are just not researched almost at all um uh, i would only see them useful in like island maps both are gathering speed okay um <clears throat> maybe like I, I was getting them on island maps but on normal maps the fish runs out too fast maybe on nagari you can do it but that's about it galley population reduced from four to three Junk population reduced from 4 to 2. I didn't even know junk was 4 pop. Jesus Christ. Uh, we see a lot of like more uh, uh, population changes. Wow, 6 pop. I didn't even know that these ships were that much pop, to be honest. It's kind of crazy. Attack ship range armor reduced by 1. Except for the French Hulk. So, I'm assuming that's because they're removing being able to shoot while moving. So, they decided to nerf the, the armor. So that the boats are not just standing there and like shooting each other forever, which sometimes happens. Um, so, you know, I like those changes. Uh, Bagla Springald weapon damage increased from 50 to 70. This is something that was brought up by the uh, pro players to developers. Um, I don't know if you guys know but specifics, but Hulk from any Civ does 100 damage. Uh... Bagla from Delhi and Abbasid do 50 damage. So this is a problem because a lot of the naval stuff has a lot of armor, including wooden pallet, palace, pallet, pallet, whatever, the walls. Walls have 50 armor. So when basically Bagla, which is an age 3 ship, shoots at the wooden walls, they do 1 damage. Which is like, it's ridiculous, right? So they're increasing the damage so you can actually damage the walls and also by increasing the damage having armor uh kind of reduces that issue they, they'll have harder or easier time killing dogs and stuff like that so kind of like bring them a little bit more in line with the other ships while they still have the the arrows at the same time attack speed reduced from 325 isn't this increased not reduced speed reduced slower well yeah but it should be attack speed increased from 325 to 375. Potato, potato. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, that's a nerf. So it's going to shoot 0 0.5 seconds slower, but it gets more damage. A warship formation spacing reduced from 4.5 tiles to 3 tiles. I've never used warship formation, so... I don't even know what that is. Is that just the spacing? Like, whatever. Uh, Bow Chad's weapon a range reduced from 9 to 8 tiles. Bow Chad's are really powerful, so this kind of makes sense. And the last one is Naval Navigator no longer gives plus one weapon range, increases sight range improvement from 1 to 4 tiles. Cool. So they're trying to do some changes for the naval, uh, naval battles, which I think is cool because right now they kind of suck. So I'm looking forward to this and especially the nerf airships no longer be able to fire while moving because i thought that was always stupid because the the ships that are able to move have a huge advantage so yeah um galley doe and junk help text updated to specifically indicate their benefits from range to damage blacksmith technology there you go um 
Update the selection area for all fishing deposits to match the visual. This also resolves issues where deep fish became harder to select as the resource was depleted. Oh, cool. That was kind of annoying. Uh, when it was getting depleted, you kind of had to click much, like, quite a bit above the deep water in order to select it. Core building and upgrades. Uh, buildings under construction receive 50% more damage. Uh, this is mainly done for tower rushes and just kind of putting castles in front of your opponent or keeps where the opponent can't do much. So it's going to be a little bit more risky to kind of just shove buildings in front of the opponent and... Uh, yeah. Um, keep build time increased from 120 to 140. Stonewall Tower build time increased from 60 to 90. Obviously, we have discussed with the developers uh, the rules that we use for N4C with the stone walls being removed from feudal, or we didn't make them in feudal and stonewall towers. Um, so. The developers are obviously trying something different, which is to increase the build time of stone wall towers by 30 seconds. I personally don't think this is enough because the issue with stone wall towers is if they're made in feudal, you there's no counter to them. Uh, uh, the only thing you can build is ram, and rams actually get crapped on by the stone wall towers uh, because they have sprinkled in placement, does a lot of damage to the ram. So. I personally think that Stonewall Tower should be pushed to castle. Or maybe it should take way more damage from uh, behind when attacked by infantry. I don't know. Um, boiling oil cost increased from 250 to 100 to 500 to 200. I do think that boiling oil is insanely powerful. And the fact that it was always cheap uh, kind of made it like free to get. So um, I, I don't mind that change. Boiling oil research time increased from 60 to 90 seconds. So basically when you place a keep, it's not like, oh, boiling oil, easy clap. They can't do much more. So, yeah. Um, Greased axles, movement speed uh, reduced from 20% to 15%. Uh, this is the siege movement speed, if I'm not mistaken. So they are nerfing siege uh, a little bit more, 5%. Geometry moved from university to the siege workshop. Uh, I don't know what that is. Wait, what is that? Is that the 20% gunpowder damage? Oh, it's 30% trebuchet ram damage. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, okay. And it's getting a, a, a big buff in terms of cost. I mean, it is too expensive. 300 wood, 700 gold for that at, like, Imperial is... Not worth it. Like, it's not like you're going to make a ram in Imperial, you know. Uh, geometry research time reduced from 90 to 45. They probably have the stats that that upgrade is not getting used almost at all. So, you know, a little buff. Why not? Uh, Siege Works moved from uh, Siege Workshop to the University. Um, removed completely from Chinese. Wait, what is Siege Works? Yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. The health upgrade is moved from Siege Workshop to University. I guess I don't want to have too many upgrades on Siege Workshop, uh, which kind of makes sense. But it is, again, a nerf to Siege, because usually you can get it instantly the moment you hit Imperial. But now not only you won't be able to get it, but it's actually increased cost as well. So, yeah. Siege Works research time increased from 60 to 90. Siege Works for the Delhi Sultan research time increased from 900 to 1,350 seconds. God damn! Uh, Barnes now correctly provides 30 stone per minute instead of uh, 15. I think this is the monastery upgrade that gives you resources of free relic. They're nerfing Siege further. I do think Siege is powerful, but I don't mind personally the place that Siege is at right now. I do think that the horsemen do counter Siege pretty well, but I don't think these are gigantic nerfs, maybe like small adjustments, so... I think it's still fine, but, um, yeah. Now we're going in, this is like for all sieves, by the way, like what we just saw. Now we're going into sieve specific ones, okay? Abbasid Dynasty. Camel Archer move speed increased. Camel Archer bonus damage versus Spearman reduced. Camel Archer damage overall increase from 10 to 12 in feudal 
Castle 12 to 14, and then Imperial 14 to 15. Now, this, in my opinion, is a mistake. And I gave my opinion to the devs as well, and a lot of pro players think this is a big mistake. Uh, the Camel Archers right now are, I think, good unit. Uh, they're not OP, they're not useless, they're a good unit, they have their purpose, and they're a very good raiding late game unit. Now the problem is, if you do this change, you're very close to making Camel Archers the old Horse Archers. So this should not go through because there is a very good chance that people are just going to mass camel archers like horse archers back in the day and that's it nothing else so this change should not go through now i do want to say this patch is pretty big so i am assuming that these changes were made month and a half one one to two months ago right these changes are not made last week because abbasid increased in popularity and increased in usage and play and win rate quite a lot. So these changes I feel like were made when Abbasid wasn't doing great. Abbasid is doing more than great now. So this change should not go through. Um, yeah. Camel Rider damage increased from 9 to 14. Camel Rider bonus damage versus cavalry reduced from 18 to 14. Uh, Camel Rider damage increased from 10 to 16. Camel Rider Imperial damage yada yada. Now I'm going to be honest. Camel Riders suck, okay? They're terrible. This is my suggestion. <claps> Remove Knights from Abbasid. Remove Knights from Abbasid completely and replace them with Camel Riders. Have very similar stats to Knights, except make Camel Riders do a little bit of extra damage against Cavalry. So that way, just like Delhi has Elephants, right uh although delhi still has knights they should just remove the knights from abbasid and replace it with camel riders and that's it because right now it doesn't make sense in my opinion to have both of them elephants are different elephants compared to knights are slower and they fill a different role camel riders are literally supposed to do the same thing as knights and that's a problem so what I would like to do, like, I don't know what the stats of, of a knight are, but let's say knight hits for 20. They should make it so camel riders hit for 18, but they do 26 or 24 against cavalry. I think that'd be a great change, and it would make them uh, useful and usable, and that's it. So, yeah. So instead of being, like, uh, at this special unit, uh, I think that... They, they can just have cavalry that's more specialized in fighting other cavalry. Can still raid, but not as good as knights themselves. So, that's my opinion. Uh, camel barding now only affects camel riders, no longer affects camel archer. I don't know what the up this upgrade is. Camel uh, barding upgrade moved from blacksmith to stables. Oh, is this the one that gives them like plus three armor or something? That's actually a nerf to Camel Archers, which I'm not sure why. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, camel Barding cost reduced from... Wait, it's not that. What is it? Plus armor for ranged? Okay. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, they're making it cheaper and... Uh... Oh yeah, this is the Imperial upgrade, isn't it? Wait, is it Imperial upgrade? 300, 700, that should be Imperial. Anyway. Economy wing changes. Agriculture cost reduced from 200 to 500 to 75 wood, 200 gold. This is obviously a pretty big buff. Because, like, this is so, so, so much cheaper. Almost three times cheaper. Agriculture research time reduced from 90 to 45. This is the upgrade that makes farming 15% uh, better. It does make sense to reduce the cost. Because, if you think about it. It's worse than um, the upgrade that you have on mill. Because that upgrade on mill affects all food gathering. And this one affects, like, you know, just farms. And it was, like, insane cost for it. So, yeah. 
Now, they're making a bunch of changes for Abbasid for their dynasties and stuff. Or not dynasties, sorry, um, wings. So every wing is getting like shuffled upgrades, uh, buffs, nerfs, whatever. So, trade wing. Grand Bazaar moved from Imperial Age to Feudal Age. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure that this is the upgrade that allows your traders to carry a second resource and give 25% of the gold, right? So if you're carrying 100 gold, you can also carry 25% of like that, which is 25, or like stone or wood or whatever. So they're moving that to feudal. They're clearly trying to make uh, uh, Abbasid wings kind of not just always go eco into culture into military, but try to maybe get people to go for uh, trade wing first. Now, if this is going to happen or not, I don't know, but it is a pretty big buff in my opinion. So maybe it's going to be viable. Who knows? I'm definitely going to try it out. And they're reducing obviously the cost to 50 foods, 125 gold. What fresh food stuffs is exactly? Research time reduced to 60 seconds. Spice roads move from feudal to imperial. Um, I don't even know what upgrade that is. Is, is that the upgrade that increases like the armor of the traders or some shit? Or no, that's the upgrade that gives you extra gold, right? Yeah, it gives you 30% extra gold. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. So I like that. Maybe trading, trade boom is going to be viable with Abbasid. Who knows? Military wing changes. Uh, boot camp requirement reduced from Imperial to Feudal. Now, this is either going to be whatever or this is going to be busted as hell. So for those that don't know, boot camp is the upgraded military wing that increases your infantry health by 15%. Which is quite good. And again, maybe they're trying to, you know, get people to go military wing into feudal all in. Um, which, you know, uh, I never went uh, Abbasid feudal all in, but with this, I mean, 50% health on all your infantry units, it can be a thing. So uh, it's definitely a possibility, in my opinion. Obviously, they're reducing the cost to match the other two. So now every wing has military trade, um, military trade, culture, and economy wing have very, very good first upgrades. So I do think it's going to be more of a pick than it currently is. To what extent? I don't know. We'll see. We're going to have to test it out. Um, and then also some other shit has been reshuffled. Like the camel archer, uh, uh, archers or camel archer, camel support armor increased from one to two, but it's put in imperial. So, you know, uh, Abbasid bug, bug fixes. Faith can no longer be used to convert naval units. Converted Abbasid villagers will correctly have their build menu updated to match their new allegiance. Um, the Abbasid Golden Gate production speed bonus now properly applies to all production buildings, not only military production buildings. Nice, I didn't even know that's a bug. Camel Archer Bow is no longer invisible after upgrading incendiary arrows. Didn't even know that was a thing. Combsite Bow's tool tipped out correctly displays 33% attack speed instead of 25%. Improved processing now applies to town centers. Wait, what is improved processing? Dude, I gotta learn the, uh, the upgrade names. Oh, 8% returned, right. So I don't know if you guys know, but there's a bug. Uh, this is the economy imperial upgrade where your villagers just magically drop off 8% more resources and apparently it doesn't work on town centers. I found this out like two weeks ago. So it only works on the economy buildings. So if you build a bunch of farms around TC, it ain't, they ain't gonna drop extra resources. Um, but that's cool. I mean, amazing. So overall, uh, I do think that Abbasid changes are cool as far as this goes. I'm worried about the Camel Archer and I wish Camel Rider uh, just replaces a knight and uh, that's it. Chinese. Stonewall Tower build time increased. So obviously they're increasing specifically for Chinese Civ because they have 50% uh, 
build uptime. Do you guys want the link? Is that what's happening? Only... There you go. Uh, ancient techniques cost increase from 150 to 350 gold to 200 wood and 500 gold and research time increased. What is ancient techniques? <clears throat> Guys, if you see a weird name on the screen as far as the upgrade, just tell me in advance what it does. Uh, 5% per dynasty. Okay. Uh, so they're actually nerfing that, making it more expensive. Okay. And they're increasing research time. I already thought it was it was pretty... Not necessarily underwhelming, but it, it's kind of okay. Um... But, I mean, sure. I guess. Uh, I mean, it's not underwhelming. It's good, but it, it's a weird thing to specifically target, I guess. Uh, barbecue of the sun. Sight range increased to match the outpost. I think this is really cool, and it makes sense, right? BBQ is, like, a, this huge, basically, tower. It's, like, it's not a castle, but it's, like... It just has a lot of HP and helps defending, and it doesn't make sense for it to not have as much range or sight range as the outpost, so I like that. Imperial Spies ability from the Imperial Palace Landmark now reveals villagers, traders, trade ships, fishing ships, and officials. Um, I think this landmark sucks. I'll just say it. Uh, you're never going to make it over the other landmark. Maybe a better change for this landmark would be IMO to reveal military units instead of villagers um because if you build this landmark you're already at the point of the game where you either well you're either early castle which you know where opponents workers are that are around their base right because it's not like they're gonna be farming in fucking africa uh or in the super late game the opponent like the opponent's workers are literally gonna be visible so Maybe revealing units for like 5 seconds or 10 seconds so you can see the enemy composition would be better. And maybe people would be making it and going for it. But as is, I think it's just underwhelming. Uh, I don't mean, by the way, to reveal units permanently. It has an ability, like, you use it and it reveals villages for like 10 seconds. So, yeah. Um, it is for 10 seconds. Dynasty changes. Dynasty units and buildings are no longer gated when advancing to the next dynasty. So what this means is, um, like whatever dynasty, you make that specific unit for that dynasty. If you advance to the next dynasty, you can no longer make the previous one, right? That's how dynasties work currently. So they're basically making it, as long as you achieve the dynasty at any point in the game, you can build that unit for the rest of the game. That's what it means. Which I think makes sense. And the way it is now kind of sucks. Young Dynasty movement speed no longer applies to Siege. Uh, uh, this was quite OP in my opinion. So uh, that's the, the movement speed. It's like 15%, 10-15% movement speed. That makes sense. Uh, especially with the Chinese Siege that's already really strong. Village requirement reduced from Song Dynasty to Tang Dynasty. Village cost increased from 100 to 125, and village health increased. For those that don't know, village is that population building that Chinese can build that gives you uh, 40 pop. It used to cost 100 wood, now it's going to be 125. So what this means is, you don't need Song Dynasty to build it anymore. You can build it in the first dynasty when you start the game. Okay, so... I think this is a pretty pretty interesting buff. Interesting the way they went about it. Uh, I do think that village is quite powerful. Uh, so basically, uh, it gives 40 pop, so you would need to build 4 houses, which is 200 wood. So you basically have cheaper houses, or cheaper house in the long run, but it is more expensive initially. Maybe there's going to be a build where people open with uh, a village. Probably not though, because it is 125 wood, which is quite a lot for the start of the game. Who knows? Uh, and this also means that you can build the other unique buildings to their dynasties one dynasty before. So Granary, uh, for those that don't know, gives you uh, 
villager harvest bonus from the farms from uh, it was 15% now it's 10% and you're gonna have it in song dynasty instead of castle uh, dynasty you're gonna have it in in song I don't know how useful this is gonna be because 10% increased gathering on farms in feudal like you don't really go that fast into farms but I mean cool I guess uh, and Pagoda, a requirement reduced from Ming Dynasty to Yuan Dynasty. Uh, Pagoda, a lot of people don't even know what this building is, by the way. Uh, it's basically a building that you can build three of. And once you build it, you can put a one relic inside. And instead of... Um, instead of... You know when you have a monastery, you get that upgrade that gives you 30 of each resource a minute? Well, Pagoda, if you put relics inside, they were giving you 100 of each resource per minute. So it was actually quite insane. But now they nerfed it to 50, 50, 50, 50 per minute. So I I see why they nerfed it, but maybe 75 would be a better deal. Who knows? Um, so basically before, if you got five relics or three relics, I guess, because you can only build three Pagodas, you would get 300 gold, 300 wood, 300 uh, food and stone a minute from them. It's pretty big. Uh, oh yeah, you're still getting 100 gold because, you know, that's the relic. But the other resource you're getting 50 of. Uh, official changes. Now, I, I, I just don't like these. I'll, I'll just say it straight up. I, I don't like these. Uh, China is getting some buffs here. Uh, they're getting a nerf as well with the um, no, no longer applying to siege the movement speed. I just don't like this. The supervised production I'm fine with. I don't think that's a terrible change because they're they are getting buffs. This and this I just dislike completely. And this is a big nerf. Currently, training time for imperial official is 20 seconds, which is equal one villager. Now they're making it so that it's 30, which is villager and a half. You might not think this is a big deal, but you open with Imperial Officer with China right now. And they're also making it from 150 food to 100, and f 100 food and 50 gold. Like 50 gold is a lot of gold early game. A lot of gold. And I, I just disagree with these changes. I don't like them. I think it makes the Imperial Officers weird. Uh, it's gonna delay China feudal age. Not a fan. Not a fan of these two. Especially this one. Because if you make four Imperial officers right now, you lose four villagers, right? With this change, if you make four Imperial officers, you lose six villagers. So that, that's a, it's a big change in the grand scheme of things. And not to mention it costs gold now as well. So, don't like it. Hope it doesn't go through. This, I don't mind. Uh, like, I would rather see if Imperial Officer costs go to 200 food. Right? Than this. Because this just makes it extremely awkward to use early in the game. And I don't like it. Uh, if they wanted to reduce like the feudal hit... Or when the timing hits for China, they could have just increased it to 200 food. Uh, English. So these are the China changes. Um, again, I like the Dynasty stuff. I like what they're trying to do there. Uh, we'll see how it works out. Not a big fan of that though. English. Meta arms train time reduced from 22 to 15 seconds. Uh, this is quite a big buff. Uh, because it will allow you to have way less production buildings. In order to pump meta arms. And also, Vanguard men at arm armor increased from 2 to 3. Mm. Abbey of Keg W's healing rate increased from 4 health every 1.5 seconds to 6 health every 1 second. Um, I think these are interesting changes. I do think that English does need some help as a Civ because I do think it's the worst Civ right now. Uh, together with maybe Rus. Um, and I do think they need help. I just uh, found it interesting that they, they, they went through men-at-arms uh, in order to achieve that. So, 
kind of weird, but I mean, buff is a buff, and going from two to three armor is quite big, so you know. Um, or maybe these three changes are, are supposed to go together, and you're like maybe they want to have a play style where you go like a little bit of a forward Abbey of the memes, and then you open with like double barracks men at arms, and you just run in. Uh, you know, get some damage and then run back your men at arms to heal. Because the healing difference is quite big. Six health every one second is pretty good, right? So maybe that's what they want. I, I don't know. Maybe they want English to be able to rush with men at arms. Who the fuck knows? I guess we'll see. But it definitely might make that build viable. And then starting a boner increased from 150 to 200. Um, I think this is one of those things where it's just a nice buff without making anything OP. Um, so for example, right now when you play English, you, you build a house, you build a mining camp, and you build a lumber mill, right? And then you're out of wood. But what you can possibly do in the next patch, you can open a house gold mine and you have 200 or 100 wood left and what you can do is you can build mill and a farm instantly and if you open with like two villagers on wood maybe you can get really really fast farms and start up your economy faster so that's like a very minor eco upgrade but maybe it's gonna be good right because that's the only thing i can consider uh being like useful to get that extra 50 wood because there's nothing else you're going to be able to farm oh yeah you can go that's right like cop says you can go mail plus wheelbarrow straight away so you can rush 50 gold and go wheelbarrow instantly like again it's a it's a minor buff it's not insane it's not something that's going to break the game but it's a small buff so i guess we'll see how these play out uh i i do think that english still suffers from castle age their castle age is awful and it has to do with their landmarks and castle being trash. I think that they should, their eco landmark, the King's Palace, should give something else other than it's just the second TC. I don't know what, maybe it should be like a mini keep. Like, I, I what? Oh, server fa connection failed, okay, great. Uh, maybe if like keep I don't know again how much damage keep does but if keep does like 10 damage Maybe they should make it so King's Palace does like three damage a shot and acts as a keep I don't know, but or maybe villagers produced out of King's Palace costs 40 food like They should do something with that because right now it sucks. It just it's basically paying uh, 1200 food and 600 gold for a second TC which it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever also, it's its HP is to complete shit. So, yeah. Setup camp can no longer be triggered uh, while in combat. Okay, that's the um, camp fire for longbows. Uh, Alright. I, I don't think, personally, these changes are big enough for English to be much better. I might be wrong. Maybe this rush will be... Oh my god, I just walked over my foot with the chair. Maybe this rush is going to be good. Who the fuck knows? Uh, French. Uh, French bug fixes. Arbre Ability now increases armor by 5 instead of setting armor to 5. Uh, great. Didn't even know that was a bug. Fix the bug with the French tech tree where traders were displayed in Dark Age on their Chamber of Commerce. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, military siege engineer UI now matches other civilizations. All right. Siege Engineer icon is restored. Royal Knight help uh, text updated to reflect proper duration of a bonus after a successful charge attack. So these are just bug fixes. One thing that I really wish they would fix is uh, Mongols and another Sith can use the Y, I think it's Y hotkey to build Siege, but the other Sivs can't use the hotkey when they try to build a ramp, but they have to click, which I find very annoying and I hope they fix that. Um, yeah um i think french out of all sieves is probably the most well-rounded sieve but i do think that french in the late game needs some kind of buff because right now it's complete trash and uh 
it just sucks. Like, maybe buff the Royal uh, um, Siege, I don't know. But French in the late game right now, it just sucks pretty hard. So, uh, other than that, it's a pretty well-balanced sieve, I would say. Um, Holy Roman Empire. Now, this is where the juice is at. Regnus Cathedral, Relic Capacity reduced from 3 to 2. It is a nerf. Don't think it's enough. Like, yes, it's a nerf, but if you even get two relics with HRE, it's fucking insane. Like, the power spike is just insane. And I think that HRE will be too strong still. HRE in lower leagues is not really a good sim from what I've seen in stats. But at a high level, HRE is... If you don't stop them from getting relics, which is basically winning the game at that point, it's so hard to win against HRE. So, so, so hard. Don't know about this change. I, I, I'm, I'm glad it's a nerf, but... I would have personally liked if they went with the... If they want to do something like this, they should have gone with the route where... Uh, because this is a 600 gold increase, right? These two relics. And right now in the game it's 900. What they should have done is allowed three relics in the cathedral, but nerf it to 200%. That's what, if, if that's the route they wanted to go, that's what they should have done. Like, they can put three relics, but it's 200% gold per relic. Because the, the problem now is, even if you get one relic, it's insane gold income. Like, it's insane. So, yeah. The good side of this is if I gotta play the uh, Potatoes Advocate, is that HRE players will now be encouraged to put their uh, relics into keeps and into towers. So we might see some cool plays with that, but I would have much preferred if they went with three relics in Cathedral, but 200% gold instead of 300%. So, yeah. Um... Burger Palace now produces infantry 400% faster instead of training units in batches of five. So for those that don't, that don't know, I think this is how it works because I've never made this landmark in my life. But uh, right now it produces five units. So you can queue up five units and they all train at the same time, which kind of sucks because that means you would need insane economy to, to be able to support this. It basically means five barracks. But by making it that it produces 400% faster, that means you're printing units, kind of like Palace of Swabia. So it's a it's a change that's good, I think. Um, uh, twerking Palace, research discount uh, increased from 25 to 30%. Twerking Palace, research speed increased by 30%. Uh, this wasn't this wasn't a thing before, right? I've actually never built the twerking palace in my life, nor burger palace, because I think they're both terrible. Uh, but you know, maybe in this patch you'll uh, you'll be able to build it. Like this is some kind of like feudal aggression, and we did, we do see a couple of changes so far in the patch that are leaning towards feudal aggression. So now, you know, you, you can get the upgrades much faster. The discount is a little bit cheaper. Uh, you know, 30% discount is pretty good. And where is... Here. Um, right here. So before we move into Palace of Savia, this is what might enable uh, HRE to go for the palace as a actual playstyle because right now i don't think it's possible i think chapel is just better but inspired warriors effect is the buff that makes your villagers collect faster so it's going from 30 to 60 seconds which is a huge buff currently i think uh, a prelate can buff up to eight villagers on its own right pretty sure it's eight villagers on its own with this it can buff it's not for villagers wait what is inspired warriors then wait what the fuck does it do you can buff units with 15% damage and armor. Okay, that's trash. Okay, no one cares about that. That's never going to be a thing. All right, anyway, ignore it. 
Um, okay, so uh, a twerking palace might be viable because of the 30% faster increase and reduced cost. Uh, but um, chapel is probably still better if you boom, but this maybe goes, you know, if you want to be aggressive and futile. 15% uh, damage is trash. Yeah, you know why? Because a prelate costs 100 gold. And uh, I would rather have, I don't know about you, but I would rather have uh, two units worth 100 gold and a prelate that's doing this in the battle and buffing. And then enemy comes and just claps it and you just lost 100 gold. <clears throat> you can buff bombards with it. I mean, maybe that's good in the late game, but like if you look at my games and stream, the games are so chaotic and everyone's moving everywhere. Like, are you really going to get value of 15% damage unless you're playing like a boomer, like playing with your boogers, like, like, you know, uh, mouse on the table, just like, hmm, where do I send my units? Okay, 15% damage buff. Like, that doesn't happen. The games are too fast and there's too much unit movement for you to get that, um, for you to get that value, in my opinion. Great on paper, but very hard to, uh execute it is uh for 60 seconds though i mean we'll see maybe maybe people will use it who knows um i don't know maybe maybe you're gonna have like five prelates it, can it be automatic i actually don't know if it's not automatic this is trash if it's automatic maybe you're gonna have prelates at your rally point to just like inspiring units but other than that i think it's uh it's automatic uh, maybe it's going to be a thing. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, another thing is 15% damage would only really impact uh, hand cannoneers and siege. Having this on like melee units is okay, but not the biggest deal. So... I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's going to be really good. 60 seconds is a long time, so we'll see. Palace of Swabia, villager production. Speed and discount reduced from 75% to 66. Does anyone think that uh, this should have been in the game sooner? Uh, I would actually even like if they change it to 50%. I think 66% is still insane. Uh, so I would have liked if this was 75 to 50%. And it would still be busted as hell. Uh, landmark so but you know nerf is a nerf we'll take it marching drill cost reduced from okay i found this very interesting uh and this is a monk s right here so marching drills is the upgrade that makes your infantry move 10 percent faster and they're reducing its cost which kind of weird because i already thought it's pretty cheap like 100 food and 250 gold for your units to move 10% faster. That's pretty good, right? To put in perspective, in order for China to achieve the dynasty that gives that is 1.2k food and 600 gold. So like... I don't think it needed a buff, especially because Aitri is in a good spot. And then marching drills research time reduced from 90 to 60 seconds. Now this is the real Monka, okay? affects prelates if you guys didn't know a couple of patches ago maybe two patches ago prelates got buffed their movement speed got buffed so pre a warrior monks from Rus are the fastest monks then prelates and now prelates are getting affected by this which i don't understand they're already incredibly hard to kill because they're fast as fuck boy like they're zooming around the map and I, I don't like this. This, I don't like. And I have expressed my dislike to the right people. Uh, so, yeah. Not a fan of this change at all. Uh, added a prelate indicator for HRV players to be able to more easily locate and keep track of their prelates. I'm assuming this is like what Delhi has in the bottom left where you can select scholars. I think. Um... It's like, okay, cool. Uh, HRE bug fixes. By placing a relic in the dock, it's no longer uh, possible to surpass the 25% attack speed bonus. The Aachen Chapel blueprint 
Aura range indicator has been updated to use the correct gold color. Dude, I was, I was, I was like, when are they gonna fix that gold color, brother? I can't play without proper, uh, you know, shade of gold. Uh, I mean, cool. The Great Palace of Flensburg, wonder. Can now properly make use of influence and emergency repair ability. I know that's the name. That's a complicated name. Uh, docs can now properly make use of influence and emergency repair ability. Great keeps no longer grant a spring gold when a unit is garrisoned. And the spring only placement is not research. What? What the fuck? Their keeps have Springle when you put a unit inside? Oh my god. Dude, that's busted. What the hell? I've been upgrading them like a baboon the whole time. Relics placed inside of dogs no longer increase the attack speed of all players' ships. Alright, cool. Um, nice. I mean, what can I say? Mongols. They're adding textiles improved. Increases the health of villagers by 50. That's kind of big, actually. And kind of cool. Uh, Mongol bug fixes. Improved biology now only provides 10% health instead of 15% for a total of 30% instead of 35%. No idea what this is. Is, is that the infantry health? Cavalry HP? Fix the bug where Mongols improved teeth, teeth barns did not list the correct research income. Fix the bug where Mongols teeth barns research time was 80 seconds, 70, 10, and 60. It also gives proper 30. Oh my god, Mongol, this thing was bugged. It gave plus 20 instead of plus 30. Kaganate Palace now produces Mangudai 90 seconds instead of 77. It's okay, no one ever builds that landmarks, so it's fine. Uh, the Mongol landmark town center can now be packed while at max population. Stone commerce help text updated to specify trade bonus. Okay, can defense center tool tip up here to show the correct bonus. So plus two. Wait, it gives plus two. I thought it gives plus three. Oh my god, I'm actually learning so much today. Rus, warrior monk weapon a range increase from one one five to three. Does that mean if you have like a spearman here, right? And the enemy is like here. So does that... Come on. Does that mean that a horse... Let me draw a horse real quick. <laughs> okay. So does that mean... Uh, this, it's a table. It's not a table. It's a horse. Look, it's a horse. Does that mean that this spear boy can now attack over the spearman? If that's the case, that's actually cool. I like it. No, horse has a head, guys. Look. There's the ear as well. Wait, so that means... That's pretty cool, actually. Pretty cool buff. Yeah, I can give the buff without risking its life. But not only that, because you would have archers here, right? Like, you would have archers here with a bow and arrow, right? Shooting arrows, and this dude might give buff to them now as well, because it's going to be in range of everything. Alright. That's pretty cool. And I would have never understood what that meant without the picture. Hey, that's why I'm here. Um, that's a pretty cool change, actually. Because warrior monks give uh, damage to, to your army, I don't know if you guys know. Warrior Monk charge weapon a range increased from 2.5 to 3. Okay. War Horse Archer precision technology weapon range reduced from 2 to 1. I mean, they're kind of trash and they're nerfing them. Don't know about that one, Chief. Uh, you know, but they are reducing research time. So, you know, there's that, I guess. But I don't know about nerfing Horse Archers. They're kind of shit now. Streltsy double time ability no longer quickens their static deployment ability. That's a bug. I don't know if it's a bug. I guess they're not putting it as a bug. Um, okay, all of these, I mean, I like except this one. It's kind of weird. 
Now this is a huge one. Lodia fishing ships. I need an NFT of that picture. All right, I'm selling NFT for just a small uh, start of ten thousand dollars for uh, this beautiful picture. <clears throat> anyway, population cost increased from one to two. Cost increased from 75 to 150 wood. Train time increased from 25 to 38. Health increased from 121 to 250. Deep water fish gather rate increased from 1 to 19. Shoreline gather fish increased from 066 to 119. So, this is a very creative way to fix Lodia ships. So right now, the problem with Druids and why they dominate every hybrid map is they, get, they got like same amount of fishing ships. And then they transform like six and they just kill you, right? So what, what the devs are doing is they're basically making one fishing ship equal to two right now. So what that means is you won't be able to just mass transfer anymore from fishing ships to attack ships. But they will pretty much get, regain or, or, or still have uh, their fishing ship potential. Also fits their visual size. That's true. So I like this. I don't know how it's going to play out in the actual games, but I do like it. I do think that Rus will have to produce fighting ships from their dock. Otherwise, this will be too expensive because one ship is 150 wood. That's, you know, and they increase the fishing gather rate to, you know, match their cost. So I like this, but we got to see how it's going to play out. Anyway, Golden Gate. Golden Gate trade bonus have been relocated to match markets. Yeah, th this is pretty big actually, because uh, when you play a Rus, the hotkeys for trading are completely wrong. And sometimes I buy stuff instead of selling it. Like I have like 2000 food and like 200 gold. And instead of selling the food, I end up buying more food. So this is a good change. Uh, Golden Gate no longer shares a double click selection with markets. Lodia ships now have the correct upgrades applied after conversion. All right. Fix the bug with the Roost Tech Tree where Abbey of the Trinity didn't display all of its unique text. Destroyed high trade. House no longer produces deer until repaired. Did not know that's a thing. So these are all Civ specific changes that we just went through. And now there's some other bug fixes. Rams can no longer target naval units. I actually didn't even know you can do this, but I don't like that you cannot attack uh, uh, naval units with your rams. I think that's pretty funny. Like, if you're that big of a, you know, potato to let your ships die to a ram that's moving at the speed of fucking potato, then you should lose your ships. So, you know. Repairability now shows the correct uh, requirements when attempting to use it on an enemy player. Okay. The Delhi Sultanate Tech Tree now lists Home Blade under Imperial Age instead of Castle. Delhi getting nerfed. I mean, they deserve it, let's be honest. So, Home Blades is the upgrade that increases your damage on Knights and Men at Arms by 3, right? So, apparently, that was supposed to be Imperial Tech. Nobody knew this. Um. I would see this as a change, not a not a fix, but apparently it wasn't supposed to be like that. Just men at arms? No, it's knights too. I'm pretty sure it's the knights too. Um The Delhi Sultanate Tech Tree now lists slow burning defenses under Imperial. What is slow burning defenses? Plus 50 fire defense. Wait, what? aren't honed blades available in castle? Yeah, so they're the honed blades now lists under Imperial Age. They're, they're, they're moving it to Imperial, no? What? On poop you can still research it in Castle? They're not moving, they're just messed up. Okay, whatever. Uh, field construction, traction, trebuchets now have the correct tooltip. The compound and defender effects is no longer active while the landmark is destroyed. Amazing. Um, general changes, maps, change lock. One-on-one -on -one micro map size resource balancing has received a pass with the goal of improving the distribution of resources between players. 
on open mics, maps like Leipaini and Dry Arabia, this has meant uh, objects like relics, gold deposits, and stone deposits are now spawning in a tighter band for each player to count down on cases where one resource node would spawn uh, considerably further away from one player than the other. We're always tweaking and looking to improve this, so keep sending a screenshot to map scenes where you feel things are uh, generated unfairly. So what's gonna happen is, you know, sometimes your, let's say gold is like seven tiles away and sometimes it's nine tiles. So that's gonna be seven tiles always, no matter the, the map, so that it's more balanced. And also from what I know, they're gonna have relics spawn one on your side, one on enemy side and three on the middle. That's the, the, the updated uh, configuration that are happening so that the, the relics are balanced and not bullshit on divided maps like mountain pass and mongolian heights we have done additional custom tuning for several maps to have in, ensure that the dividing geography does not separate one player from the allowing of the resource deposit we were seeing instances of for example both players as large gold deposits spawning on the same side of the mountain range on mountain pass this was due to how we place resources within a central band of a map area that is calculated based on pathfinding distance for each other. In cases like Mountain Pass, okay, nobody cares. Okay. Anyway, relics. Relics will now spawn in a more balanced configuration. One access accessible uh, relic per player, three centrally contested relics. There we go. Uh, this update balance logic has been applied globally to all map sizes and tuned specifically for several maps on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, micro size. Additional tuning for divided maps at larger sizes will become in a later update. Relics have been tuned to spawn further away from each other. Um, okay, this is the cool part. Divided maps have custom tuning and will spawn one accessible relic and two contested per side of the map for a total of six relics. So, uh, maps like Confluence, Mountain Pass, Mongolian Heights, and Nagari will have six relics. And I think that's fine, because how else are you going to balance it? If the map is split, you cannot put one relic. Like, it, I like this. It solves the issue. And it also buffs HRA, KKW. Um... So yeah, they 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 did like also sacred sites parameters change, small gold and stone deposits, all cool. Um, I'm not gonna go through uh, all these. They're they're making adjustments to every map, you know, which I think is cool. Improvements, right? Added maps, Mega Random, as the name implies, Mega Random is the ability to spawn in an enormous number of different configurations. We've created a huge number of random uh, 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 par parameters that Mega Random can choose from when uh, generating, such as whether to spawn lakes and rivers, which type of impasse to use to generate terrain, if any, whether to spawn extra amounts of some resource, yada, 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 yada. So I think that's, that's the thing I talked about at the start. I think this is pretty cool. And... Um, you know, it's going to be a fun map for people to uh, to play. And then the last one, Valley Battle. Created to be a balanced, mostly symmetrical map that has a bit of everything. Open fields, yada, yada. Okay, cool. So, what do I think about the patch overall? Uh, there's only like two, three things I dislike about this. Um, and I can't explain which one, so I'm not going to go through them again. Overall, I think the patch is pretty good, and the biggest change for sure is um, the map editor and the ability to add mods to um, to the game, which I hope will be great success. But uh, we will see. I know there's more changes coming. I can't reveal what they are. I'm not just you know debating, but there are more changes coming to the game. Um, and perhaps not all of these will go through, so. But, I will say, the game is going in the right direction. That's all I'm gonna say. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate it. And let me know what you think.